I am legally insane. And hidden behind these adult-sized diapers, for men, by the way, these are for adults, not babies. Hidden behind these diapers, I have some recent Xbox 360 absolute bangers. I picked them all up from the pawn shop downtown. And this particular time, I wasn't going downtown to see your mother like I normally do on a Friday night. This particular day, I was downtown to hit up my local pawn shop that I can sometimes find some pretty good deals on. Used to be able to find deals all the time. They used to sell all their games for $3 up until January of 2022 when some new employee came in and told them that all the retro game prices have gone up. And ever since then, they've been using eBay prices. But I still go in there from time to time because I, I love retro games. That's why I'm addicted to uh, buying retro games. I don't sell. I only buy. Never sell. I will take these games with me to the grave. On rare occasion, I will sell a game, but only, only if it's to your mother. So I went down to Stock Exchangers. I'm browsing the games. And they actually had something I had never seen before. And it's pretty dang hard to show me something that I haven't seen before. Because I've seen it all. All I do all day is I'm looking at retro games. So lo and behold, I just about blew my balls off. I, was, I, was, I, I wish I had my gun on me at the time. Because I, I was really itching. Where's my gun? I was itching to point this trigger at my own balls as I was in the pawn shop. And I, was, I, I just wanted to blow them right off. Let me show you what I found. If you know about this, you're a real OG, hardcore Xbox 360. Okay? Because I didn't know about this. This is an Xbox 360 exclusive, okay? This ain't on the PS3. Remember that. Here we have Transformers the game. I left the price tag on. I paid 34 bucks. I paid up big, big time. Okay, but it's, it's worth about that. Um, I wasn't able to find a, ch a cheaper copy on eBay than this with the shipping to my door. I, this is Canadian dollars, by the way. I was not able to find anything cheaper. Because I actually left w when I first found it because I wanted to go home and check, <laughs> check the prices. And uh, I ended up go going straight back like 30 minutes later. This is Transformers the Game. 
And you're immediately thinking, well, that game, you know, that game's not particularly good or rare. What makes that one so special? Well, uh, maybe put your glasses on. I got my glasses on and I'm wearing a diaper. So put your dang glasses on and look closer. This says Cybertron Edition. I'm going to zoom in for you. Transformers the game Cybertron Edition. So what the hell is this? This is a GameStop slash EB Games exclusive. So this, meaning this was not sold anywhere else. And it's an Xbox 360 exclusive on top of that. And it just so happens this is a mint condition copy, by the way. Did I mention that part? Because that's also part of the reason why I bought it. And I'm going to take that sticker off. The stickers, the stickers come off easily. There's no big deal about the sticker. So this game is very unique for several reasons. And it's rare, it's very rare, especially to find it complete. So I got it for multiple reasons. Uh, let's just start with one of the main reasons. One, I'm a collector, hardcore collector. And two, I think the price is going to go up in the long term. And it's already going up too, by the way. Hell, let's pull up the chart right now. Let's, before we even get into the actual game, let's pull up the chart. All right, here we go. I got the chart up. And as you can see, as of... This game pretty much bottomed out, was flatlined slash bottomed out January, February of 2021. Really not that long ago. In the retro game world, that ain't that long ago. That That's like yesterday in the retro game world. Because these games take years and years for the prices to you know, reach uh, very high levels. You're not, this game ain't going to go to $100 overnight. Although sometimes that actually does happen, but it's more, it's more slow and steady. This is a slow and steady riser. Look, look what's happened since then. This is a straight line up. Straight friggin' line up. Recent sold listings are reaching into the $40 to $50 level. $52.96 Canadian dollars. Good condition, forty-two thirty-eight. Did that include shipping? Uh, probably not. Some in some cases, maybe yes. Thirty-nine seventy-two, twenty-one nineteen. Probably didn't include shipping. Here's another thing that you need to know: is that this slip cover is a little bit rare. There's a lot of copies on the market that don't that don't have the slip cover. Where did I put it? Yeah, a lot of copies out there that don't have this, they're not actually complete. So if you want a real, legit, complete copy, you're going to end up paying up. That's why I ended up paying the asking price of $34 plus tax at stock exchangers. Because check this out. This is what it comes with. This is a bonus DVD. That only this this special edition comes with, Cybertron edition. It also comes with this comic book, and guess what? The comic book has a special code at the front. And as far as I know, only this version allows this code to work. So you enter the code. It's right on the cover. That's the code. So there's no, there's no secret. It's not a DLC code. It's a code that you enter with your controller. Un so it's the game. what it does is it unlocks the bonus missions. And traditionally, how you would unlock the bonus missions is you have to beat the game with both the Autobots and the Decepticons. Okay? And what the code does is it unlocks a Cybertron level. So you get two Cybertron levels. I'm pretty sure all games have the levels, but the other games you have to unlock them manually. So this code is uh, right, up, up, down, right, le left, left. That's the code. But as far as I know, only this version of this game uh, actually has that allows that code to work. As far as I know. So that's a pretty freaking cool feature. You can skip right to the bonus missions, the bonus levels. They're just for fun. They're not part of the story. They're, they're nothing f fancy. They're just for fun. They're bonus missions. 
And you also get, hold on a second here, you also get this comic book. This is an actual comic book in addition to the regular manual. So some pretty freaking cool stuff in this version of the game. So not only do you get all this extra features, including the bonus DVD. So let's read the back here. You get a bonus code to unlock two Cybertron levels, one for each of the warring factions, Autobots, and Decepticons. And these are exclusives that you only find in this version. Bonus discs with exclusive content featuring talent interviews. This disc is very hard to find. Talent interviews and behind-the-scenes looks at the making of the game. A limited edition prequel comic book that sets the stage for the epic battle between Autobots and Decepticons. Bonus disc. A lot of versions of this game are floating around that don't have the bonus disc or the slipcover. Or in many cases, they have everything but the slipcover. Or everything but the freaking bonus disc. So that's a rare gem. I'm very happy to find it find that at a pawn shop because I, I wouldn't have known it existed otherwise i'm very happy with this purchase and the game itself ain't bad so i know what some of you are thinking you're thinking that that game is based on a movie there's no way that game's good well it is good it got mixed reviews at the time but guess what a lot of games got mixed reviews at the time when they came out by these garbage so-called professional reviewers that go on to become cult classics go on to become very popular games, or maybe at the time when of their release, the market bashed them, probably, you know, no thanks to the reviewers. And then later on, as people actually start playing the games, they realize, oh, this game's actually good. This is a hidden gem. Price goes up. So Transformers, the game in general, has been creeping up fairly well. Now, certainly, it's by far, far from being the best Transformers game. So there were, let's see, two, four, six, seven Transformers games released on the Xbox 360. Got Transformers the Game, which is the very first one. Came out in 2007 based on the movie. Next, you had Revenge of the Fallen. Complete garbage game, in my opinion. You can completely ignore that one. Okay, so Transformers the Game set the stage for the sequels that ended up fixing anything that needed to be fixed and improving anything that needed to be improved. So it's still a classic. It, you know, it just it's just not as good as the sequels. So Revenge, excluding Revenge of the Fallen. Where Transformers games started to get things right was with War for Cybertron 2010. And then, by the way, they all then they came out with uh, Dark of the Moon based on the movie. Don't care. we're not talking about that. Don't care. But then the next best Transformers game, and arguably the best that they've ever made in history, believe it or not, was Fall of Cybertron from 2012. So War of Cybertron and Fall of Cybertron were the top two dogs. And then, of course, they came out with Rise of the Spark 2014 and Transformers Devastation, a little, little bit of a late release, 2015. Okay, so what you need to know about this game is it is an action third-person shooter. Okay. You play at, you have two campaigns. You've got Autobots and Decepticons. Pretty basic stuff for Transformers, but, you know, you get two, two sides of the story and two separate winners. So it doesn't quite follow the movie because, you know, you can win with either side. It has an open world feel to it. It's a little bit open world. There are destructive environments. You can practically destroy anything, really. You can pick up a lot of various objects around the map. And it's GTA-like in that the more destruction you cause and the more innocent people that you harm the more you have a meter that, that grows and the, the military will come in and start uh, aggravating you and, and you're not allowed to do too much of that and that's, that was actually a huge flaw in the game. I think you get five strikes and then I think you actually lose the mission if you, if you build up the destruction meter too high. So it's not 
so so to penalize you for that is a little bit annoying actually because in gta you can destroy as much as you want eventually more and more cops come after you and eventually they'll they'll probably take you out but you could in theory survive and just c continue to go on a rampage forever especially if you're using cheats or you have unlimited weaponry uh, <laughs> or, or you summon the tank or whatever you're going to be doing so probably some of the main complaints were just the fact that it was too short hell man it's a movie game relax too short get out of here lack of multiplayer well no one cares about that in 2023 because we're beyond the days of friggin 2007 multiplayer so that doesn't matter and then there was some unbalancing with the difficulty you know i'm i don't necessarily agree with that some cases it's too hard some cases it's too easy it really depends on the player but here's what's especially interesting. Here's the hidden gem treat. I did some digging on this. And it turns out, because this game is on PlayStation, not the special edition, but Transformers the game is also on the PS3. Well, it turns out sometimes the Xbox 360 version of certain games is better than the PS3 version. And I learned that, I started to learn that from the comments, thanks to you guys. In the comments, somebody out there had told me that the Xbox 360 version of Driver San Francisco is better on the 360. It's like better graphics. Hell, maybe it even has a better frame rate. Well, guess what? The 360 version of Transformers the game is has a better frame rate than the ps3 version so there's less frame rate issues to be more specific because there are frame rate issues in this game when there's too much going on the screen yeah it sucks but whatever okay it i'm not too bothered by that kind of stuff myself some people are but the 360 version you're going to get a lot less of it you're going to get less problems and when i was reading up on that they were saying it's because of a poor port so the, whoever the programmers were in charge of porting the game over to the PS3, they probably weren't very good at programming and, you know, caused some issues. But here's another kicker. The, the graphics are also a little bit better on the 360 because the lighting is better. And I've, I just found that very interesting because the two consoles are almost identical, really. So maybe that, I, I don't know if that was, a, again, a poor port programmer issue or if that was just 360 being the stronger, better console. I'm not sure. But that makes this version the best version. So if you're going to get one version, this is the one to get. And this is the one that's probably going to go up in value more than the PS3 version. And hey, hey, if that means it's $5 more expensive in the future, it goes up an extra $10 then hey, that's an extra $10 that you didn't have to spend, and that's an extra $10 in your pocket, because if you're going to buy it now, you're going to be getting it cheap. Okay, 360 game prices are going up. I made three videos on that so far. I got 3.9 videos coming for a total of 6.9 videos. I'll put the link in the description. Yeah, and I know I haven't made the next couple videos yet. They're very time-consuming, but they are coming. I'm going to be making two of them back-to-back -back pretty soon. So the game's a fun game. Conclusion, the, the game is a fun game. I recommend checking it out. Is it as good as the other Transformers games? No. If you're going into this thinking, oh, I want a AAA friggin' best game ever made, Transformers. Okay, well, it's not this game. But if you're looking for a rare gem, check it out today. Alright, next game on the list. Found this in the pawn shop. Dragon Ball Raging Blast number two, and I paid up big time. 70 frickin' smackers. Dragon Ball Raging Blast number two. 
and I paid up big for a reason. Two reasons. One, I was able to trade some of my garbage games. If, for those that watch all my videos, I had a couple of garbage games that no friggin' retro game store would even take. And they were in so such poor condition that I couldn't even sell them on eBay. Unless I put them in a giant lot, of course. But I didn't even bother uh, trying to do that. Because they, they were so, uh, the condition was so bad. I even found uh, an extra uh, Xbox One game that I had. It was worth like $4 in good condition. It was such a poor condition copy. It was an X library copy. Somebody had like ripped up the cover, cut out the UPC code. And I, I, yeah, I just, I took them into the pawn shop out of curiosity. And they offered me, it, I think it was $11 or eleven fifty for a total of six games. So just under two bucks a game, and I was more than happy to take it, and I put that money toward this game right here. Because this isn't in the best condition, and this is a straight up eBay price. This is not a deal. Although one could maybe argue it's a bit of a deal, because this is a rare ex um, a variant. There's two variants floating around there. I'll have to get a better image of this. This one originally came with some special DLC. This is an, a variant exclusive. Only You can only get this from this variant. This has bonus exclusive trunks, sword, and Broly, or Brawly, Broly, DLC code included. And there's also a Walmart exclusive version floating around. And that one has its own exclusive DLC and it's different DLC. It's like a costume of some sort. I forget what's on that one, but they're completely different. So this is a very rare variant. Now, the problem with this is that the condition's not, not super great. So I'm not too pleased with that, but more than happy to have it in my collection. Because guess what? This is the best Dragon Ball game ever made fighting game wise the best dragon ball z dragon ball in general fighting game ever made if you're familiar with fighting games you'll know that previous to this game the king of all fighters was dragon ball z budokai tenkaichi number three so for those unfamiliar with that particular game here's a chart price charting for 222 dollars canadian recent sold listings as of the day that i'm freaking filming this or yesterday technically because it's uh the next day now sold a uh, recent sold listing sold for basically 250 dollars canadian Okay, this game is no joke, and it's, it is this popular because it's that good. It's that freaking good. By, that, by the way, I have the Wii version of that game, and that, that game's finally been going up in value. I have three copies of that game for a reason, because that one's arguably the best fighter ever made. That's the only one that I will say could potentially top this one. And everyone else thinks that the Wii version sucks. But I think it's the best because of those motion controls. You can have an entire fight. No buttons being pushed. All freaking motion. I mean, maybe there's a couple of buttons being pushed. But it's mostly motion freaking controls. And I think that's awesome. It makes the fighter... Uh, it's just for fun. Like, it's not serious. It's not competitive. You got to do all the actions. You got to do your Kamehameha waves. Every single move. And it tells you what to do. It tells you how to do the motion. And it's not very accurate. You got to do it like three or four times sometimes before it registers. But that's all part of the freaking fun, man. When you're trying to bust out that Kamehameha wave or bust out some special move and you're doing the action over it. It's a freaking workout. And, and your buddy beside you doing two-player, he's doing the same dang thing. You're doing all these crazy Dragon Ball Z motions. You're, you're really freaking fighting. It's a freaking brawl. Ah, uh, so I love that game, but uh, Dragon Ball Raging Blast 2 is the top dog at the moment if we exclude the Wii version that everyone else thinks sucks when it doesn't suck. 
So this is a fighting game. And he, this is an interesting one because this one also got mixed reviews when it first came out. Terrible reviews. Um, who was it? I wrote this down. Somebody gave it a 5 out of 10. GameSpot gave it a 5 out of 10. Well, guess what? In 2023, the people that know about this game, they give it a 10 out of 10, buddy. So this game's a little bit rare. Probably had a low print run. It either had a super low print run or everyone that has it is keeping it because it's going to 200 bucks. It is going to 200. There's no freaking question it's going to 200. It's going to take many years, but it's going to get there. You don't get a game, you don't make a game like this, this freaking good and don't and you don't get there. So it, it the story mode is kind of garbage in this game. It's it's not really about the story at all. It does not follow the anime. And yeah, that's really its only downfall. But w what makes it extra fun though is mainly two reasons. One is the the fact that it actually makes you feel like you're fighting in uh, in an actual Dragon Ball fight. And the best example I can give you is the, the realism or the... Like, I'm okay, I'm not heavy into the fighters. I know everyone talks about the combos and, oh, it's got the best combos and all this stuff. But it's more about the realism in the Dragon Ball fighting. So you got destructive environments. You can throw your opponent, smash your opponent into uh, mountains, just like the show destructive environments but more in particular you can even pull off realistic dragon ball moves like a solar flare it will blind your opponent allowing you to run away because it's got these huge open world uh, maps basically it feels like you're fighting on a freaking whole freaking planet so ton you can run away and hide behind things and your opponent cannot see you it's a 3d fighting game so you run away, hide behind a mountain, hide behind a building, whatever you can friggin' find to hide behind, and then power the hell up and get maximum power, and then pop out and start fighting your opponent again. Maybe you pop out and throw a friggin' destructo disc in his face. How about that? How about you pop out, you throw a friggin' uh, a Kamehameha wave, you know? Uh, whatever your favorite move is, you pop out, you throw it. Okay, cannon beam attack, piccolo, you do whatever you want to do. And you could be over 100 characters. Now, keep in mind that includes transformations, so technically it's not actually 100 characters. But when you add in all the transformations, and you can be all the unique characters, you can be friggin' Chao Su, you want to be Chao Su, and you want to beat up Super Saiyan 3 Goku, this is the game to do it. Chao Su's finally going to get his day. Okay, let's give Chao Su some respect. Chao Su used to be a respected fighter. Arguably. He cheated a little bit. If you... Yeah, uh, mostly he just cheated. But, hey, at least he knew how to fight still. He, he was a cheater, but he knew how to fight, okay? And then uh, then all of a sudden he, he just died. <laughs> so, well, Chao Su's coming back. Okay, Chao Su's coming back with Vengeance. They added some unique stuff in there, like you can go Super Saiyan 3 Broly. That's something that, you know, you wouldn't find in the anime. Well, here you can you can do cool stuff like that. Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta, they got that in the game. This game, 10 out of freaking 10. It's going to 200 bucks. It's probably going to 300. You heard it here first. Keep an eye out for it. And if you do end up picking up a copy... And you want to be super hardcore about what kind of copy you get. Keep an eye out for the variants. The Walmart exclusive. And this. Maybe this was a GameStop exclusive. I don't know the history on this. Probably it was. You know that way Walmart would have their exclusive. And GameStop would have their own exclusive. So this game is freaking good man. Oh yeah by the way two player. Is, is actually split screen. And I get why they did that, and I love the fact that they did that. Although it kind of counters uh, itself, but they did that because, remember, this game has that open world feel, the realism of the Dragon Ball fighting, how you can run away and hide behind things. This isn't like a side-scrolling fighter or something where 
uh, the camera always knows where you are. No, you can actually hide from your opponent or your opponent can hide from you technically. And you got to go find him. Hey, well, where the hell did he go? Uh, He's freaking solar flared me and ran away. Where, where did, where is he? So in two players, uh, two player has split screen to kind of give it that open world feel. The only difference is you can't really hide because you can just kind of, Hey buddy, I'm looking on your screen. You're hiding behind that mountain. I'm going to come kill you. Like, you can't really hide. But it's the thought that counts. And I still love the fact that you can still break away from your opponent and run around the map. And, and it doesn't lock you into one screen. So that's pretty friggin' cool. So although I didn't necessarily get a steal of a deal at the pawn shop, I do consider $34 for Transformers Cybertron Edition, exclusive GameStop exclusive. I do consider that a, a pretty good deal. And the fact that the pawn shop took all those garbage games that I had, oh, they were garbage, man. One of them was an NHL hockey game. I wish I recorded it and made a video of that trade-in. I really do. I wasn't thinking clearly at the time, and I I do remember rushing over there because I was worried that somebody was going to buy this. And yeah, they, I you know what, I gave them such garbage. And the the very interesting thing is that as he was pricing them in the computer, he didn't even look at the condition. He didn't even open the cases to check if the game was inside. And I'm not exaggerating, mind you. I go in there all the time, so they they probably trust me like I legitimate they all know me I mean I'm legitimately in there all the time browsing so maybe that had to do with it I don't know but he did not check the condition of the cases he didn't care that the UPC codes were missing that some of the cases were busted up he did not care because all the good cases I already had case swapped I took them for my expensive rare and expensive games and which is why I got, you know, it was under $2 a game, but it was pretty close to $2 a game, which I was very happy with. Absolutely. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'm trying to get to over 9,000 subscribers on my way to collecting over 9,000 retro video games and Nintendo Switch. I love the Nintendo Switch. Nintendo Switch is awesome, guys. If you don't have a Nintendo Switch, I'm telling you right now, consider picking one up or or wait until next year and see if Nintendo comes out with the Switch number two and check if it's backwards compatible. That's an acceptable response as well.